Hey, good morning, Catalina Fiddles Church. It's Pastor John Stone with our Tuesday morning devotion. And uh, come to a really unique part of the Sermon on the Mount, or, or at least a unique passage, because it's one you almost hear no one talk about. I mean, when I read it, you'll know it. But I cannot remember the last time I had a conversation with someone about this. So, hey, let's look at it. It's what we'll be looking at this Sunday, too. Again, you've heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you've made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all. Do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne of earth, for it is footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. We all know that. We can dye it, but he didn't mean that. He meant really change it. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Well, I mean, it's kind of fascinating. Again, I bet you and your friends have not had a lot of conversations about this passage. But he's cautioning, cautioning he's giving us, he's cautioning us against taking frivolous oaths. And there's even some, uh, there has been some tradition, even among Orthodox Christians, those who believe that Jesus is the Christ and who follow him and who believe in the Bible, who will not, for instance, take a pledge of allegiance to their country. Uh, whether it be the United States or China, they say, hey, that's going beyond this command to simply say yes or no and not take a no. So there's, people have taken this very seriously. I, I'm going to make two small points this morning. The first one is, Jesus is doing a bigger thing here because in verses 27, because we just read verses 37 through 30, I'm sorry, 33 through 37, but in 27 through 30, he talks about adultery. And as we talked about on Sunday, uh, basically the issue of lust and what that reveals in our heart. And at the end of that, he talks about divorce and not divorcing a wife by simply giving her a certificate where the man has all the power and just to simply decides to divorce her and says, I'm done with you. Here's your certificate. Go. And then he talks about oaths. And so the first thing that Jesus is teaching us is that the two things that hold together marriage are sexual fidelity and oath-keeping. He's saying that we should give... We should give uh, that in, in marriage, partners, a, a man and a wife in the context of marriage, should give themselves and only to themselves sexually to each other. They should only give sex to one another. And this is what the point of lust was. And that kind of goes without saying that the only proper place for sex is in the context of marriage. Marriage is for a man and a woman, and only there should they express those sexual desires. But secondly, he says that you make an oath. Uh, and you, you you take a covenant vow uh, with your spouse, and you should keep it, and you should do, go to great lengths to, bre to not break it, because he's cautioning us against taking too many oaths, but he certainly would have us take an oath when we got married, and he's saying that what should hold together a marriage is that that union, that, that intimate uh, sexual union that's not only sexual, but psychological and uh, spiritual and that we also should take seriously that we said, yes, I'll marry you. And he recognizes in this, in some sense that these are the things that will hold marriage together. But he also recognizes that people are too often given, and this is my second point. The first point is this is how marriage stays together through um, intimate physical union and oath-keeping, which we don't value very much in today's world. People lie all the time. And that's my second point is he says, be careful what you give your oath to. You should only give an oath to something you are sure you can keep. You're sure you can do it. And we give oaths all the time. Here's a funny one. I'm being funny. When you join a fraternity or sorority on a college campus, you give an oath. In fact, my daughter's oath was I, 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 you know, I, I promised my sisterhood for all eternity to these sisters. And I pointed out, I don't think you can promise that. I'm not sure that's an appropriate oath to take. I don't really care that she was in a sorority. But it was an interesting oath that this sorority had an oath that says, I, I promise sisterhood for all eternity. You can't make that promise. You don't know if those sisters will be with you or you'll be with them. And he cautions us and he says, look, be a man, be a woman, be a person of your word. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. And don't go beyond that. Don't say... I swear by God's name. I swear by the Arizona Wildcats. I swear by my money. He says, don't do that. You don't have power even to change the color of your hair. 
and you don't have the power to make sure to know that if you if there'll be money tomorrow, there could be a massive war or a, a meltdown in the stock market. But he says this. Let your yes be yes and your no, no. And we see Jesus is the one who demonstrated this. Yes, I will go to the cross. No, I will not follow you, Satan. He let his yes be yes and his no, no. And it's a word to us to call, to recognize the importance of our vows and therefore not to take too many of them. I know we don't talk about this a lot. It's an interesting passage. I look forward to preaching on it on Sunday. I look forward to seeing you. Have a great week.